welcome, welcome. Uh, hello, uh, welcome to the play that changed my life. I'm Patrick White, co-founder of Harbinger Theater, and this is the podcast that brings more theater into your life. Uh, it's an elaborate boondoggle for me just to have more theater to talk about. Thanks to OSM Studios for helping me uh uh, get this out to you and today we have two fantastic guests uh, Lisa Breik uh, who is a treasurer of Harbinger Theater and uh, welcome Lisa thank you Patrick thank you and Gail Sparlin uh, who is the creator and uh, founder of Swamp Lily Charity Hour a uh, music educator in the uh, area who has gone on to producing. Welcome, Gail. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, can you feel it? It's March. <laughs> it is March in the capital Here region. We go. <laughs> uh, the wind is blowing. Uh, there are 55 productions listed on the 518 Theater Artist page wow, for the month of March. Mm. The high schools are buzzing. Yep. Lay Miz is in the house, <laughs> storming the barricades, and uh, we all have stuff going on. Yeah, so uh, how's your March it's, going? It's great. We're very fortunate, are we, in the Capital Circuit area to have all this going on? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it's crazy busy, um, and uh, the two of you ha have come to theater in circuitous routes, and I want to get into that, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it's very exciting uh, how many opportunities there are, and you know, everybody has a place, everybody uh, has an opportunity, I don't want to say everybody has an opportunity, we still have a ways to go as far as access and diversity. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're growing and we're strengthening and, um, you know, uh, every week there is more and more. Uh, this weekend there's Les Mis. Uh, we have, you know, a couple of major stages in Schenectady also. Uh, Schenectady Civic Players is doing August Osage County closing up this weekend. Schenectady Light Opera Company is doing Fun Home. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Harbinger Theater is doing In the Blood this weekend at St. Rose Theater. Um, there are 10 high schools producing this weekend. There's a production Confetti Stage is doing of White Rabbit, Red Rabbit uh, just this weekend. So, uh, yeah, it's busy, busy, busy. We get into this conversation a lot. Um, like, there are some people who feel it's too much, that mm -hmm. there isn't enough technical help to go around, or that we're limiting audiences by having, uh, you know, that there's not enough audience to support all that's happening. Mm -hmm. Any feelings on that? Um, I think, well... Thank you. And you're very good about informing everyone of everything that's going on. I think that's great. So sometimes I actually map out a calendar. It's probably not as extensive as <laughs> yours and Chris's calendar. But um, I think I mentioned last week in class, I like the Wednesday and Thursday night opportunities. Like I'm taking my mom to, um, to go see Osage County tonight um, because this is my last opportunity to catch it. We'll see um, you there. Oh, excellent! Yay. Um, so, I, I like the you know the the options, the more options. Um, um, I I think it's there's a lot of opportunity there. Yeah. Where people can learn tech, as well. Yeah, we've grown the tech field. Right. Right. Oh, absolutely, and that was what I mean. That's what I taught in high school. My I taught kids theater tech. Uh, you know, I went to school for music technology. Um, they learned to do the sound. My kids did all the live sound for almost all the programs, every program that was in the school. And that isn't always the deal with high schools. They don't, you know, they bring in professionals to do the live sound. Yeah. We put our kids to work on it because it was good for them. You know, it was a really good thing to know. Even if you're not going to go out to be some kind of tech person, it's really good to understand process. And in regard to all the theaters, if, if the theaters didn't attract enough of an audience, they wouldn't exist. Right. They wouldn't keep going. 
I think it's fabulous. You know, the, the, the theater scene, the music scene in this area, and the arts in general are really well supported, you know, by area media, radio stations, and by the people. And it's, yeah. you know, it's fabulous. And it should be that way. It's upstate New York. You know, you're, you're only two and a half hours from New York City. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, you should be able. We should be able to attract that. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you were talking about that, and, uh, and I feel the capital region is the perfect place because you have all these opportunities to create. You know, and you know, yes, you can act, sing, dance, but uh, you can direct, you can write, you can produce, you can. Uh, you know, whatever your intro review, you can podcast, you can, (laughs) you know, so uh, yeah. And then you're within two and a half hours of New York City, Boston, Montreal, you know, and uh, you know, it's a sweet spot. Uh, You know, the Berkshires have world-class theater every summer, gets national attention by the New York Times. Uh, Proctor's now uh, hosts the opening of tours. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, you know, they're teching and starting going off across the country right here in Schenectady mm-hmm. because of its proximity to New York City. Mm-hmm. There is literally something for everyone. Yeah. yeah. From uh, eight years old to 80. And I, I think Proctor's is what saved Schenectady after GE shut down. I really think it's the thing that kept the downtown alive that kept people coming and that inspired other um, businesses to come downtown, to be downtown, you know, and to recover. Yeah. I know there's other things involved in it, too. It's not that simple. But mm-hmm. I think Proctor's is at the heart of it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Have you noticed uh, the Daily Gazette recently as far as their arts coverage? Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, you know, today is uh, Thursday, so they had the preview section, which was renamed Nipper Town. Yes. Right? Yep. So there are four theater reviews, or there are three theater Mm -hmm. reviews in uh, the Daily Gazette uh, today. And and they're (laughs) in the bloods, actually, happens uh, outside of the entertainment section. It's on the obituary page. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Which we'll take it, you know. <laughs> we're we're happy placement. to be there. Yes, but uh, you know, uh, when you get to be a certain age, it's the most, uh, you know, the most uh, studied. Uh, you know, everyone mm-hmm. wants to check out the obituaries. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it, it, it's turned into uh, you know a fabulous uh, media. Yes, uh, and it's accessible and, online too. Yeah. You know, it's. You know, you can get a hard copy or you right. can look and it you up online. And you can share it on social media. Yes. Yes. And there's no paywall behind it. So, yes, excellent job, Daily Gazette. Absolutely. <laughs> of course, now, uh, disclaimer, my, my reviews appear on Daily Gazette. Well, they do. How fortunate for me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. And my interviews, yep. five questions with. Mm-hmm. Um Excellent. Yeah, I think some some of the uh, I hate to characterize some of the feeling of there's too much and we're not getting an audience might be uh, if I had to then there might be some ego involved like we're not selling out or we don't have the audiences we deserve mm-hmm. and um, I kind of feel like. You know, I was always taught in acting school that your uh, job is to um, fully communicate with one person, that you are there, and if one person gets what you're doing, Mm -hmm. that you've succeeded. Mm -hmm. You know, so an audience of seven, 70, 700, that you know, you are there to perform and and to communicate Mm -hmm. uh, and to get through just to one. Then you've done your job. Well, plus it's it's also who is saying there's too much. Is it a supporter who feels bad that they can't get to everything and doesn't want to offend anybody if they didn't get to their show, maybe? So I think it depends on, too, where it's coming from. (laughs) 
What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I, you know, I, I'm I'm sorry. Like, uh, Sienna had a production last week that I really wanted to see. Mm-hmm. I've never seen the play. It was a new play, a maze. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jack Ellis and Simon, they have a really strong acting company at Sienna. Mm-hmm. It just wasn't in the cards. You know, we had to open a play and, uh, you know, mm-hmm. we just couldn't do it. Well, you know, and you're somebody involved in the theater scene. I mean, heavily involved. So your schedule's always going to be that way. But the folks going to the shows, you know, I get it that sometimes they have to make a choice. But at the same time, it's, I just think it's awesome that they have choices. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, that you Absolutely. have so many choices. Yep. I think it's great in, in every respect. And I think it's really good for, for people who are just beginning, who let's say they're not, they don't care if they're a, a rock star or, a, you know, they get to be a theater star. They just want to do it. It's accessible. You know, mm-hmm. it's accessible. If you're good at it, mm-hmm. you can do it. And you don't have to change your life. You don't have to move. Yeah. You just mm-hmm. do it. And that's that's the best thing because it's so good for you. You know, yeah. all of this is just so good for you as a human being. You know? Yeah. It 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 um it fills you up. You know, it helps you cope with all the crap and and um and and it flips your switch and you get a little attention that you like and yeah. mm-hmm. you know. And so I don't. I don't worry about that. Yeah, it can be. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, there are people that can feel that way. Um, but you know, as far as uh, you know, Harbinger is concerned, it's like well, I love that there are choices. I love that people are going to other shows. That there are, uh, you know, all these other things going on. Um, you know, I think. Uh, uh, I, I would rather be influential, you know, than, uh, because face it, you know, we're in Albany. It's not like, uh, you know, my salary is dependent on this no. or, you know, I'm not, you know, career wise, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I'm all about, uh, growth and choices and, you know, uh, more, I, you know, if someone wanted to start a theater company i was like do it i I was like you know go do it uh you should really experience it you'll learn a lot oh my gosh do you ever learn a lot you need so (laughs) many skills to put on a full production people have no idea yeah until you get really involved in it Mm -hmm. how many different skills you need to do a big theatrical uh, production or how many people yeah people Mm -hmm. you need to do it yeah. Yep. It takes a whole team. Yeah, I'm always talking in class. Lisa is also one of my students and a star pupil for a number of years now. How long have you been studying with me? Fall of 19, I started. What? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Holy moly. Yeah. <laughs> Going on five already. Was it before or after? It had to be Men on Boats. I was your stage manager for Men on Boats. That's when I first met you. Yeah. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um and then I started taking your classes and and well, so I've been a stage manager for Yep. A number of years. Number close to 20. Wow. And I um I could never understand how all the actors were having so much fun. They would come <laughs> off stage and they were they were like you were just saying, you know, it's just so much fun. There's energy, and they were having a good time. I'm like, how are you having a good time? How are you not having a seizure? I'd like to be petrified. <laughs> you know, I was like, I would be petrified up there. So it was, I was stage managing the Crucible in the spring of 18, and I met a lot of your current students in that production. Megan Ryan, Sarah Papini, uh, Ryan Palmer. Well, so for, yes, and they all kept saying, you, you take Patrick's classes, pay, take Patrick's class. I'm like, who is this Patrick? So, so they, so Sarah Popini convinced me. She said, if you take Patrick's class, I will do a scene with you. It's like, okay, great. So, but that was spring of 18. I didn't work up the courage to go to your class until fall of 19. That's how petrified I was and, and unsure and not confident, you know, that like, something I could do. So, 
Yeah, so I started in the fall of 19. And um, I do credit my stage management experience because I'd be backstage a lot following the script along. I always did that. That's just what I do, I word for word. And I would start thinking in my head, I would do this this way. I would, maybe I would go to the left here. So that also helped me with my experience, so... And the directors of The Crucible, mm-hmm. Val Kavanaugh and Sue Frost, Frost yes. are now directing a play called Little Wars, yep. and they have recently asked you to come to rehearsals. Yeah, just to sit in and, and, and check it out and maybe advise a little bit and make suggestions, and, and I did, and they seemed to like it. I felt a little bossy <laughs> in my suggestions. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, but, um, it's, I'm, I'm a fresh, fresh set of eyes, you know, they've been seeing it, seeing it. And, and I just came in and I'm like, well, how about this? And so they've been really, they've been listening to my suggestions and we'll see if they stick, but, um, I'm going again on Sunday. Uh, and it's a lot of fun doing that as well. I'm so proud of you. Uh, Thank you know, you. yeah, yeah, Thank no, you. that's, that's amazing. And it shows, you know, how much you've grown and how much you've worked and how much you've taken in, uh, you know, learning from the experiences of men on boats and all mm. that we've, uh, accomplished in Harbinger and, yeah. uh, yeah. even before that, uh, death tax, uh, yep. was, was the first play that we produced uh, in the spring of 2021 at the beginning mm-hmm. of the pandemic. Yep. Uh, Lisa did, was in. Yep, and we did um, um, one online play, um, uh, Flint? Flint, during the pandemic that I was <coughs> in as well. Lisa loves Flint. I do love She's Flint. She's putting that, putting that in my mind as we are entering play selection season. We have to do Yes, Flint. remember Flint? <laughs> <laughs> but it's by Jeff Daniels. It's a great play. It's mm-hmm. about a, a black family and a white family living as mm-hmm. neighbors side by side together, and they get laid off from the auto plant, and uh, and their fortunes and the city, the city's fortunes as far as the water crisis, mm. are reflected in the play. It's a great play. Yeah. Um, it's a great play. Yeah, but I, I'm always telling my students, you know, I, I I would love them to produce themselves, you know, come up with an evening of monologues. You know, there are all these small little bars, places, cafes, you know, you go to these places and say, hey, you know, uh, I have a bunch of friends, you know, we'd like to do, you know, an evening of storytelling. Yeah, that's yeah, all that's a story. There's lots of storytelling open mics around. It, that's what I don't I, like I said people don't understand how much is out there in such a good way and you can start mm-hmm. this at any any age you know mm-hmm. this isn't something you have to start when you're 16 17 18 you know you're 40 and you're like oh maybe I want to try this out well right. go for it just join in you know number of, in. number of my students are retirees uh, yeah. you know uh, that have come around uh, they're a bunch mm-hmm you know? Yeah, and I, I learn from, um, so in class, um, Patrick pairs us up with another student, and it all gears towards scene night, which is the last event of our of our term for each, each session. And so we all perform our scenes, and then Patrick will direct and critique and suggest. And so I've been learning a ton from that as well in class, not just from doing, but from listening to you direct them as well. I take away so much of that every class. Our play in the blood is uh, being performed at St. Rose Theater. Uh, it's the last scheduled play at St. Rose Theater. Um, who knows what's going to happen in the building once the college closes uh, for good uh, in June. Um, but you are a rosebud. I, I just am. I am. learned. Mm-hmm. Um, and you talked about, uh, well, what did you go to St. Rose for? And t- Well, I went to St. Rose for my, um, ultimately my music ed. I started at SCC, went to SUNY Albany, and then I went to St. Rose for my music education degree, and then my master's degree in music technology. 
And I was there from like 1999 till 2007. And I'm um, going, you know, taking two, three classes a semester because I was working. I was growing up, you know, you can't just go full time. But, um, uh, and they had the new center. It was, you know, it was a great experience. And I don't, I was just saying this earlier, I don't know what folks are going to do who want a master's in music education now. I don't know where they're going to go, you know. So another college needs to take it on, SUNY Albany, SCC. I know they're a junior college, and I don't, know what, I don't know what entails, what it all entails to do something like that. But somebody, somebody needs to take it on because I wasn't the only adult in my, my graduate class, you know. There were four or five others of us that were in our 40s or 50s you know, getting our master's degrees, you know. So mm. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. It's, it's, it's rough. It's rough for a lot of people. It's going to be rough for the community. Yeah. Mm. Um, I live two minutes away from oh, the theater. Yeah. yeah, I just cut through a, <laughs> an old convent, uh, which was turned into a dorm on Morris Street, go through the back alley, and I'm there. It's yeah. a two-minute walk mm. from our apartment. And St. Rose Campus has 87 buildings. <gasps> in the Pine Hills neighborhood, uh, which are going to be abandoned. Mm. Um, you know, and uh, there has not been a lot of movement yet mm -hmm. on what's going to happen. Nope. Um, so yeah, it's very scary. Um, uh, but, you know, let's hope for the best and, you know, and it's kind of ironic that we're doing this play about a unhoused family oh. mm -hmm. <laughs> in this building yeah. that that is about to be abandoned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, but you had also said something about when um, students come to you and they're uh, trying to decide, you know, whether to go into education or performance mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. your advice. Oh, I tell them to go into education. I mean, yes, if you're a performance major, you perform more. But if you an education major, you're still performing. You're still being a musician. You know, you're still having to learn to play. You have to, you know, and you have to study a pretty broad spectrum of of music in that regard, you know, and then when you're done, you have a, you have a degree, you have a degree in something that you can fall back on, you know, and you can certainly still be a performer. You don't have to go to school for performance to perform, you know, there's plenty, especially here, there's plenty of opportunities to do that. Yeah. You know, you just got to get out there and do it. And that, as a teacher, as a teacher who taught kids, to perf not to perform, but just get them on the stage. The big deal was just to get them on stage. Just get up there. Get mm -hmm. up there and be brave. I don't care if you're going to be an actor. I don't care if you're going to be a musician. Just get up there and be brave. Just be brave. Because in life, you have to be brave. And this is very valuable, you know? Yeah. And, you know, the people still look at music. And I'm getting on my tirade here. But <laughs> people still look at music as a little bit of fluff, you know? And... And I can remember colleagues asking me as a teacher, well, as a music teacher, do you have to go to school as long as other teachers? You know, things like that. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. Okay. Um, but, uh, the unknown. you know, there, you know, it's a, there's a lot to being any arts major, you know, there it's history. You know, if you went to school for theater, you're studying history. If you went to school for art, you're studying history. You study history because of the progression of how things happen and what people write about, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, as a math teacher or a science teacher, I wonder, you know, how much of that they continue to study uh, throughout their lives. You know, once they have their master's degree and they're sure. teaching yep. in school, yep. you know, are you reading articles? Are you going out at night? Are you, you know, are you incorporating your subject? That's an excellent point. <laughs> into I your thought life. Of that perspective. That's mm -hmm. an excellent point because in the arts, you do. Right. Yeah. You grow, 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 grow. Right. Because we, you're just always. We were talking about every waking moment, like, you yeah. know, and sometimes during your sleep. You have arts going on in your life. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't stop. Hopefully, they're running something like a history club in the in their local community or something like that. Yeah, you know where they get all their 
people. I've been playing the flute since fifth grade, and there were some years where I didn't pick it up. Marietta, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> um, but um, now they have all the fingerings that I couldn't remember or can't find in my sheets. It's online. So I was able to pick a lot of that up and yeah. just keep playing. And um, But, yeah, so in practice, and um, people are amazed. And so you you got to have the tools. And then you, ha- you have the tools, and you, you get better, and you – and then you then you get brave and confident and you just keep going so so i still have it it's, it's up in in my house and i just pick it up from time to time and play oh great mm-hmm. you know um i was thinking it, chris and i caught one high school show i think so far this season and the season's pretty much over after this weekend uh we saw anything goes up at shenandoah high school and uh one thing you'll get at a high school um that you won't get at a community theater and maybe not even at proctor's Mm -hmm. is a full orchestra oh i know Mm. i know yeah they it was uh it was incredible they had to have 40 pieces wow you know, playing Cole Porter. Um, oh, that must have been sweet. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. It, well, it's a big school. You know, it's stunning. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I'm so sad. Uh, Bethlehem, where uh, we saw a production of Les Miserables uh, last year or two years ago, mm-hmm. I think. But they're doing Sweeney Todd this weekend. Oh. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Go. <laughs> so I'm going to Mahonesons this weekend. So. Well, and what are they up to? Yeah. Anastasia. Anastasia. Yeah. Oh man. Yep. Mm. yep. Man. Yep. That's what they've taken on. So we're gonna. I'm going. That's exciting. Saturday. Yep. And Rent is at Scotia Glenville. Yep. Uh, I know there's a Beauty and the Beast. At least I think two of them. Yep. There's a they Wizard of Oz at Colony those. High School. <laughs> You're talking about him. It brings it back. Yeah. Colony High School, my alma mater. Sure. There you go. <laughs> Lining Q. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I did Carnival. I had the one, uh, the uh, the only non-singing part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got up. Uh, I got up for my audition. I had no idea what an audition was, and they said you had to bring a song. And I sang uh, Jackson Brown's "Doctor My Eyes" a cappella. Oh my goodness! Yeah, You're right out there. <laughs> And I got the non-singing part of Doctor Wilhelm Glass, oh. and I remember it. This is. Uh, I, I remember coming in, I, I used to be like a Monte Python fan, and this guy was a Viennese uh, veterinarian, I think. And, and I, so I was just playing with dialects and, you know, weird stuff. And, I, you know, he had a funny walk or, you know, like every day I would come in and try and make people laugh. And uh, I remember the director, Pat Fedebin, uh, I was in 10th grade. He's, he stopped rehearsal one day and he called me out. And I thought, uh, he goes, take center stage. And I was like, walked out. And he goes, ladies and gentlemen, this is an actor. <laughs> All right. Wow. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, it was your head explode. incredible. Yeah, oh, yeah. No yeah. I, I can, you know. It's like, could you say that again, please? <laughs> <laughs> I only needed it once. <laughs> I've carried it for. 45 years now. That's all it takes. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to mark my 50th anniversary in Carnival. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was huge. It was huge. And, I, you know, as a kid who was, you know, bouncing around through the different groups trying to find out who he is, what he wanted, and who he was, you know, it was just a, you know. I'll but look what that did by him saying that to you. You know, just that support and just putting you in that mindset in that position yeah and i was the guy in the non-singing role you know and and he's he was a musical theater guy you know you know who usually you know they want to play with the people who can sing Mm -hmm. right but uh yeah it was it was great fun Mm. high school musicals you have a lot of experience 20 years 20 years of high school musicals. Yep, you yep. have a favorite story from your... Uh, you know, it, I think the hardest one I did was In the Heights. They did In the Heights. Mm. Yeah. And that was a big deal. That was a big deal. There was a lot, a lot there that was different, unique, you know. It, 
Um, every, every year was a different experience. Every group of kids was a different experience. But it was just, um, it was always really a joyful thing to see parents come and sit down and see their kids for the first time ever perform, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, and to see the kids react to it and um, the, the camaraderie that builds it, the community that they build, which is a big deal. Building community is a huge deal. And the theater department always built that. That was, you know, those kids hung out together. And they were busy, you know. They mm-hmm. didn't get into trouble because they were busy. Because, yeah. And we all know as adults, you got to keep yourself busy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My mother used to, up until uh, her dying day, she would ask me what I was working on. And uh, she had dementia, but, uh, you know, I would tell her, and she goes, keeps you out of mischief. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, it was a joy. And plus, you know, being the, if you had, a, if I had a set of kids that were really good at being sound techs, I could walk backstage, you know, and you could, <clears throat> just the subtleties that exist backstage, you know, the tiny little conversations, somebody fixing this, somebody fixing that, somebody else getting ready to get out there, you know, all the stuff that happens behind there that makes it all work. It's just, it's really a beautiful thing, you know. It, yeah. It was a wonderful experience. Yeah, yeah that, experience. that Shenandoah um, curtain call, you know, first they brought the techs on, you know, and all the people working backstage and costumes and moving the scenery and I mean, there were, uh, you know, and there was a 40-piece orchestra, and there were 200 kids. That's awesome. That's really great. Working yeah, that's, on this that's, show. That's, yeah, yeah, that's wonderful for them, that experience. That's great. So you, My daughter, Rachel, did lights for um, the, when she was in high school in, at, in Averill Park. She, did, she ran the lights for their off-Broadway players productions, and that was a great experience for her. She went on to do lights at Sand Lake Center for the Arts for a few productions as well. Awesome. Mm. Uh, Amelie who's in our class. She's a 16-year-old. She's one of the only teenagers who's hung out because uh, my class is uh, difficult, I think, for kids because uh, it's a lot of adults and they're, you know, the kids aren't, you know, they don't have their peers, Mm -hmm. you know, and and there's a lot of listening, uh, not so much uh, doing because we'll get into two hours of scene study, you know, and that'll be... um, 10, 12 scenes that you have to watch, you know. Um, but Amelie, who is a phenomenal actor, um, she's been with me three, four years. Um, she was off last weekend, uh, and she was working tech for her high school's Oklahoma, and she's, like, a great actor. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. she was involved in the production and working tech on it. Yeah. She wants to go to film school. Mm. And she got in. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, very good. Very good. All right. Let's bring it up to date. Okay. Gail Sparlin. <laughs> yeah. You are the creator, the founder, the artistic director of Swamp Lily Charity Hour. Tell us. Okay. Well, the Swamp Lily Charity Hour, the name came from... I grew up in northern Minnesota. It is the land of 10,000 lakes, and it's more like 50,000 lakes for real. Um, in my hometown, there, you know, there were three lakes and the Mississippi River within the city limits, you know. So um, I called the band Swampily. And uh, the charity hour, I thought at this point in my life, this would be a good combination of all my skills, you know. Uh, the band is uh, eight former students. Um, and um, uh, plus uh, our piano player Larry Fink who was part of Grand Central Station and um, in, the, that includes my daughter Cecilia Gray who is my co-writer who helps me um, produce all this stuff um, she does a lot um, anyway the uh, charity hour is based on Prairie Home Companion Garrison Keeler from, uh, who is from Minnesota and old-fashioned variety shows, like when I was growing up, the Ed Sullivan Show, those kinds of shows. So, and the idea is to feature area talent, comedians, storytellers, musicians, um, uh, magicians, jugglers, whatever we can get up there, you know, and um, feature them, plus have uh, made-up commercials that benefit our charity, um, feature my band, 
um, we go up there um, and perform my original music, and um, and then uh, um, other music, area musicians perform their music, comedians, etc. And then um, we benefit a charity, and we have a charity spokesperson that comes and talks about the charity. Last month we benefited the YWCA. This month we're going to benefit. Uh, it's called Manning Moose. Uh, Angel Fund, which is uh, Burnt Hills Veterinary. They're always listed as in the top five veterinary clinics in the country or uh, in the area. And um, they help people with pet care, which is a big deal. You know, they help people to take care of their pets. They help people become vets. Um, they set up scholarship funds, um, et cetera. So this is going to benefit that, uh, and which is March 30th at 2 p.m. at Schenectady Civic Playhouse. Next month, um, I'm going back to my home base, Mahonison, and we're going. They have what's called an anchor room. It's part of Mohan Cares, and in every school they have what's called an anchor room, and it's basically a free Salvation Army for kids. They can get anything in there from shampoo to shoes to whatever they need. You know, whatever they need. You know, if there's something they need, they can get it there. Um, Mahonison's not a great big school district. Um, uh, and they're very supportive of their kids and very supportive. They were very supportive of me. They're very supportive of the music department and the theater department. But so that's what we'll be doing on the, you know, May 25th. We'll be featuring that. Um, and so we'll be featuring all former Mahonison kids performing. And there's a lot of them out there in really good bands doing really great things in the area, you know, just like all the other musicians in the area. What a dream project. Uh, it's very cool. Uh, I, I love it. You know, I, know. I, I, you know, I don't have to sing for three hours. Yeah, I, yeah, I only yeah, have to yeah, sing yeah. for 20 minutes. Nice. You know, and, um, and Your that. original compositions. My, my original You are a yep. songwriter. Yep. Yep. I'm an area songwriter. Great renown. Thank you. Yes. Um, and uh, um, it's just. Uh, it, yeah. But... And I'm going to take, I'll take uh, June and July off and then we'll. Um, and then I, I will be going to Minnesota then, yeah. and then I'll be. Uh, but we'll be um, starting it back up in the fall again, and I'd like to do one every six weeks or so. Yeah, I want to talk to you about the fall. I want to get in on that. Oh, you cool. you had asked me to host, and yeah. uh, you know, kind of the first couple backed right up to class, so I couldn't. I wasn't able to do it. But yeah, uh, I love what you've done with this. I think it's such a cool idea, um, you know, to take something old, and then you've kind of fashioned it in your own way. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got former students, you've got family, you've got a peer, you've got all this going on. It's like, uh, yeah. Oh, it's like, a, it's a little dream come true. It really is. And the attention I got... Thank you, Patrick. And the the the, um, the attention that it's drawn is is fabulous. I I had no idea it would come to that. I really didn't. I just wanted to do something fun. Yeah, you know? I wanted to do something fun and and get us out there and um and and make it a win win. You know, I grew up in a family that was really compassionate. You know, my mom and dad were Depression era babies, and they did not have it easy. You know, and they they pulled themselves out of all of that and they always helped the community you know and so I just figured this is you know this is a win-win everybody gets to perform yeah. you get some attention you get a little this a little that and then you give some money to a, a charity beautiful a good thing you know beautiful yes yeah, absolutely yeah. wonderful uh kudos to you mm -hmm. and uh, we're coming to see it good deal uh, yeah next Saturday uh March 30th 2 p.m. p.m. Schenectady, Schenectady Civic, Civic Players. Players yes yeah Awesome. Lisa, what do you got yeah. going on this weekend? Oh, this weekend. Well, um, so tomorrow night, Friday night. Tomorrow I'll night, be Friday night. seeing In the Blood at the St. Rose Theater. And we have a talk back every Friday nights of our productions at Harbinger Theater. We have a talk back, so I'll be moderating that. And um, did that last, the talk back last week I thought was 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 very amazing. It was very thought out and thoughtful. Yeah, there were a couple of responses. We, um, you know, it, it, it's kind of strange in the, uh, this production. In like, uh, you know, usually after you do a production, everyone heads to Facebook and, you know, blathers on, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and, and 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 says, you know, great things about your production. And it's been fairly quiet and reticent about it, and people don't quite know how to respond we get a lot of comments powerful 
amazing, mm-hmm. intense, mm-hmm. right? And there are a couple of guys, guys, last week in the talk back who mm-hmm. stood up and said, you know, I came from a family of 10 children. My mother had four husbands, you know, and I just felt what it was like to be in this family. Mm-hmm. Very emotional. Response. Yeah. And the other guy. Uh, yeah, he, he did actually. Break he down broke down. Bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and you've moderated Harbinger's talkbacks uh, since the beginning. Mm-hmm. Where did that come from? I have no idea. <laughs> I just enjoy it. I just start, you know, just kind of start the ball rolling and somebody else picks it up and it comes back and I throw it out to somebody else. And it's just very fun to do. Yeah. And you stepped up and really planted yourself in front of me and said, you know, I want to do this. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's going great. Thank you. I'm uh, having we're, a blast. We're very appreciative. <laughs> we're like Lisa's, you know, it's Talk Back Friday with Lisa. Uh, <laughs> you you can you. take it on the road. <laughs> you can, you can. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. I get to see the play twice. It's wonderful. Yeah. Um, and yes. your your husband, Mike, always... Uh, so supportive. You know, picks up the slack as far as if we've he missed uh, cast introductions yeah. or... Yes. He'll be he'll be in the audience. So who is it up there? <laughs> he fills in the blanks. He's, yeah, he's, um, he does a good job too. Yeah, it's great. Um, what has uh, you know? Here I am. My arm's about to go out of its socket, patting it, patting <laughs> myself on the back. But uh, what has Harbinger meant to you? Oh my goodness! Just my it's a it's a theater family to me. It's just another family that I have. And when I talk about somebody from Harbinger to my family, family that I grew up in and that I, you know, in the family, my husband and kids, I always say, oh, that's a, that's a theater member of my family. And they, they just know that I just, I, it means the world to me. Everyone is so supportive and just so just helpful and giving and understanding. We all get it, you know, yeah. and it's just... I, it, I don't know what else to say other than family. I love you to pieces. That's no secret. Um, Christopher as well. Um, and I love going to class every Saturday morning. It's guaranteed laughs. Guaranteed. Um, I feel like that's my church when I go to class on Saturday mornings. And it just makes me feel really good being involved in Harbinger. And uh, you've, you're a co-founder of uh, Harbinger Theater. A lot of the um, plays that Harbinger originally uh, set out to do came from scene work in class. Like we've been working on a scene uh, from, or a monologue from Death Tax or mm-hmm. uh, The Christians. Mm-hmm. And, um, and we ended up doing those shows. Um, and uh, some of those have been yours. Uh, Lisa is about to be in her third Harbinger production, correct? Yep. Um, you were in Exit Strategy, which came from scene work scene. in class. Mm-hmm. Agony in the Agony, which came from scene work mm-hmm. in class. And now The Squirrels, uh, which we worked on a scene in class. Yeah. Uh, the Squirrels by uh, Robert Askins, mm-hmm. which is coming up in June at Sand Lake Center mm-hmm. for the Arts. Yes, yes, yes. I did a scene with Chris in uh, uh we worked on it in class and did it on scene night and and it um, sounds very cozy <laughs> so uh, tell us what is the squirrels so the squirrels is a witty black comedy about a mixed raced squirrel family that gets decimated by prejudice and greed oh that sounds uh-huh. very heavy for a, a li- bunch of <laughs> actors playing squirrels. It has a, a, a little bit for everybody in there. And I play uh, Mama, Mamalia, uh, Mama Squirrel. And she actually is a very pow- powerful force in, in the squirrels. She's not on yeah. stage every page, but she has a very, she's a very powerful force. Mm-hmm. Yes, be good to Mama. Uh, mm-hmm. This is a... a- 
play by Robert Askins, who wrote Hand to God. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be great fun. It's a lot about income inequality. Winter is coming. Gray squirrels have all the nuts yep. and the fox squirrels are asking for help. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. It's yep a lot of cultural divide and yeah. social inequity, like you said. Yeah. And um, the the fun is is built in. You yeah. know, we're all squirrels. You yeah. know, we're all going to have tails and yeah. you know, and a lot of nuts around. And yeah. so the the fun is already baked in. So I think you said the challenge for us is going to be how do we pull this the seriousness out of it yes. instead of how the much other of way this- around. How much of a squirrel is in the human race? That's right. And, <laughs> oh, yeah. and how many humans look like squirrels? I mean, my search history in YouTube is all squirrels. So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Our first, our read through is on April 9th. Can't wait for that. That's great. Yeah. So uh, I met Lisa through uh, stage managing. She was stage manager of my production of Men on Boats, Mm -hmm. which I created. um, Well, I didn't create it. Jacqueline Backhouse, a brilliant playwright, wrote Men on Boats about a one-arm Civil War uh, colonel who... uh, uh, charted the Colorado River um, with his uh, expedition team, and it was uh, 12 uh, men played by women. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was my class, um, the first production that I produced myself, uh, A Harbinger of Harbinger. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so uh, uh, you started then. Um, you've been a student. Uh, you are treasurer with Harbinger, and now you run the uh, talkbacks, and now you're moving on to your third production with Harbinger. Yeah. Um, can't get enough of, Har- of Harbinger. <laughs> yeah, and we can't get Keep enough. It coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great. It keeps growing and changing, and we just opened our third season with In the Blood, and we have three more shows this year. Mm. Uh, Squirrels, uh, Maggie May mm-hmm. at Albany Civic Theater, and Into the Breaches at Albany Barn. Mm-hmm. So the Squirrels opens uh, June 21st at Sand Lake Center for the Arts, and it runs to the 30th. And there's a free preview on Thursday, June 20th. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Now we come to the point in the program. <laughs> the play that changed my life, Gail Sparlin. Well, Patrick, I think you know the answer to this oh. one. Oh! <laughs> um, the um, Pokegama Hotel. Um, it looks like Pokegama, but it's Pokegama Hotel. Um, it's a play I wrote in uh, 2014. Patrick played my dad. Um, it, it's about... Um, it, it changed my life in so many ways. My perspective of myself and you know what I thought I was capable of doing. I worked really hard my whole life. I mean... After high school, I did five years of pipeline construction. You know, I grew up with loggers and, you know, pioneers. It's hard to explain the hard work. Everybody lived off the land. But anyway, so this was, I wrote this play. I had recorded an album in like 2007, a song cycle. And I recorded another album in 2011. And I looked at the two of them together and I said, wow, this makes a story. These are characters, and it reminded me of the characters that existed in this place called Bokegama Hotel. My mother was a union bartender in Minnesota. They have um, uh, muni- municipally owned bars and liquor stores, uh, and they have other ones too, but my mother worked for the city, and she bartended in this place called Bokegama Hotel, and I would walk down there after school, middle school, and I would She'd get off work at 4, I'd get there at 2.30, I'd sit down at the bar, and I'd play cribbage with the old man, you know, and, and or whoever else was there. And you got to see the characters, the people that were there. And there wasn't anybody being obnoxious or bad or mean. There were just people living hard lives, you know, like everybody, you know, and, and their stuff would come out, and you'd hear it as a kid. You know, I would hear it. And so I put this together as a musical, um, and... It was more work than anything I've ever done in my life. You know, writing it, producing it, directing it, acting in it, 
getting it together, finding a place that would accept it and take it on and getting um, uh, a, a company that would take it on and, and getting writing grants for it. You know, I got a New York State Council of the Arts grants for it. I got press in the Times Union. I got press in the Gazette. I was completely stunned by the whole thing. That it, you know, and and as clunky as it was, it worked out well. You know, it did. And I yeah. was, and um, uh, and it gave me the perspective that I could really do this. You know, in spite of my job being so busy at school, and I was out there performing and things, but. Um, it didn't occur to me that I could write and put together productions. And, you know, since that time, I put together a, uh, a song cycle based on the writings of Kurt Vonnegut uh, um, that, I've, that, I will perf- that I perform. I did a few of those this fall. Um, I've uh, written more song cycles, and I've started writing other, other things that would, would make musicals, but I've rewritten Pokegama Hotel, and I'd like to um, add a different songs, made the cast a little smaller, and... I'd like to put it out there again. And so it's, um, it just made me brave. Just yeah. made me so brave, you know, to, to, to think that you could do that and teach like I was teaching, you know, yeah. being involved in the school theater program and all this stuff. It was, um, you know, it just, I said, oh, I can do this, you know? Yeah, now you went full in <laughs> on, on, on your first production it wasn't like a growth or you no, know it's no. like you you know you really took it all on I mean I think I spent uh, years growing into you know and I, and I evolved you know I took on directing I took on teaching I took on producing you know but you kind of yeah, I just took the whole thing on yeah. I contemplated doing a staged reading, doing all that stuff. And I was like, oh, to heck with that. Let's yeah. just do it. You know? Yeah. Another thing that I love about this is uh, taking responsibility for the publicity of it. Like, oh. like, like, you know, it's not just enough. Like, I'm going to put this up and, you know, either uh, people are going to, you know, expecting people to pay attention to you or, uh, or, uh, by the same token saying, you know, I'm just going to put it out there and what happens happens. But you like fully took on the publicity aspect oh, of yeah. it, you yeah. know? Yeah. And it was, well, and it meant a lot to me, you know, and, and I'm, you know, you can ask anybody that knows me. I'm pretty hyper. I'm pretty driven. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, you know, in some regards, probably that wasn't any surprise to a lot of people. But it was... It's a difficult thing, though. Oh, holy cow, is it ever. <laughs> it's a difficult thing because I find, you know, as an actor, if I'm acting in something, you need to say, come see my show, come see my show, come see my show. What's so great about you? You know, as a producer, I feel like come see my cast's show. Sure, sure. It's a lot easier for me to say, this is some amazing work that they're doing, rather than this is some amazing work yeah. that I'm oh, doing. Oh, I know. It's so, it's really hard to, that, that ego thing, you know, you, and, and it's, you know, I've been a songwriter for 30 years. You, you know, it, yeah. It's hard to put your st- stuff out there yep. and not feel like you're going, look at me. Mm-hmm. But you kind of are going, look at me. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you know. <laughs> isn't that, isn't that like, isn't that like the, the you know, the genesis yeah. of yeah. the performer? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It is having that one line at the dinner table that can make people laugh. You know, well, and or, some of it too is like I, I, I like I just like to tell stories. I just like being a storyteller. Yeah, I like to take I like to take. That's why I like open mics. Is like I don't have to do four songs. I can do two songs, and I can tell the stories behind them. You know, the real stories behind them, and um, I like that aspect which was sort of what that show was, what Pekegama Hotel is. It, it, it's evolved from that. Now it's become more of a story about my mom and dad, which is sort of what the audience wanted. But at that time, it was like little vignettes of people's yep. lives, and it was around the songs. And it's sort of, you know, people would act this little part, and then they'd sing this song that went with that little piece that they acted. 
And that's sort of how I like to perform. I like to, to be out there like that. And I love to communicate, which was great as a teacher. Being a teacher felt like acting. You know, mm. it felt like I was on stage. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you do it right, that's how it is. You know, and um, and so it's, I like that. And I still do. You know, I still do. Being retired as a teacher, it's hard for me to be at home all day and not be yapping to somebody <laughs> about something. And, of course, growing up where I grew up, too, people are very chit-chatty. You know, you go in the grocery store, they'll start telling you their life story, you know, and so I'm, I'm like that. You know, I'll... I can't sit down next to somebody and not start up a conversation with them, you know, and it, it, it drives a lot of people nuts, but I, I don't care. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Great. that's how I met you. Yes. Um, uh, I wandered into this audition at the old slack. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and, uh, yeah, I think it was a June. Or it was an odd time. The yes. The show, the show, the was. show came out in the first of September. So, yes, yeah, yeah. it would have been, yes, it was in June was the auditions. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and it just kind of, like, worked out. Like, at the time, yeah. I was doing uh, everything and anything. I was just, like, looking and going. And something different yeah. was really appealing, and then he didn't sing. I know. And then he didn't <laughs> I'm sorry to say that he has songs. Oh, no. It, the part's out of my range. I've lost the part. He has a very good Stony. Uh, Stony, yes. Yep, my dad, Stonewall. Yeah. Stonewall Emerson. That's, that's great. I'm glad someone else will have the opportunity to play <laughs> Stony. I love it. I can't wait to see them. <laughs> Lisa. Yes. What is the play that changed your oh, life? This is a tough one because I already talked about The Crucible and how that changed my life in the way that I went from hiding backstage to getting on stage. But um, when I was in eighth grade, we took a field trip to the egg to see the Snow Queen. And after, after the play, the actors were out in the area and we got to talk talk to them and I just you know I got to see how their fake nails were glued on and their makeup and their costume up up close and I just it was so wondrous to me and the set everything was was marvel you know and I just so I remember feeling that impact and I just wanted to know more about it um also in eighth grade um Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs I was not in that play. I walked into homeroom the Friday morning of the play opening up, and my homeroom teacher said, you need to go see Mrs. Gallagher. Hi, Joanne. And I thought I was in trouble. She was my English teacher. I thought, oh, I'm in trouble. So she said that the Snow White, the person who was, who was to play Snow White was sick, and I had to fill in that night, and that she had already talked to all my teachers, and they all knew that I was going to learn lines. <laughs> That day. So I went on stage that night with a clipboard. And to this day, I think I was the only Snow White on stage with a clipboard. Yes. You were the boss. <laughs> I was. You uh -huh. were the, the foreman. Foreman of the Seven Dwarves. Uh-huh. I really was. So um, so I, I appreciate the confidence that she had in me to do that. Um, ironically, I did not go on to do more theater in high school. I did one play in high school. And I didn't. It was a, an embarrassing a, uh, incident. My nightgown got stuck in my bed, and I was on stage as a 16-year-old trying to pull it out of the bed, and I said, "That's I'm never doing this again, which is why I went backstage <laughs> for all those years afterwards. So nightgowns don't get stuck in beds. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I want to make sure <laughs> that that doesn't happen again. So I said, uh, well, so that's what led me to be a stage manager. So it's all come full circle for me. Excellent. Um, yeah. How great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Can I just add a little something? Yeah, sure. I, um, what I didn't mention was, and part of the motivation for writing the show was my daughter, Cecilia, because she went to school for acting. And she is an actor. Even though she's teaching, she's still, you know, she likes, she likes being behind stage too. But, um, you know, I wrote, I wrote a lot of this for her, you know, the show. I wrote a lot of it around her, around her abilities to sing and act, you know, and it was, um, boy, it's a really cool thing. It's the best ex as a parent. And I hear this from performers all the time. When you can perform, when you perform with your kid, wow, it's just, it's over the top. 
You know, mm. when you see them out there and you're on the stage with them, holy cow. Yeah, it's, it's you know, it's like nothing else. Mm. It's so beautiful. Mm. And I had the great good fortune of appearing with Cecilia before Pokegama. Oh, that's right. What was the show? Great Expectations right. yes, at yes. UAlbany. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Cecilia was an undergraduate, and I came in as a guest artist yep. playing Magwitch, which was an awful lot of fun. She was uh, with Evan Jones's class. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, in Kristen Youngblood, who are still in the area producing, mm. and, you know. That's great. So uh, creating my rich theatrical life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Connected all over the place. Heck yeah. Yeah, so uh, that's great. Great stuff. Um, so uh, there are 10 days left in March as we tape this, so go out and get some theater into your life. Uh, it's all over the place in the Capital Region in March. And uh, thank you for joining us, and I'll see you in a the theater real soon. <laughs>